Here's an interesting thing. Mm. So people are commenting on the coasters. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They, they like love this. the coffee table. They love it. it that is an awesome they're coffee They're very table. upset that there were no coasters. Oh, the, okay. We weren't using coasters. So is that why we have coasters now? Um, well, Tim Hale says, maybe there is no table and that is just a really big coaster. He's, he's, like, do, he's, I, I he's like, doing jokes. That's I like funny. That. I like that joke. That's that good. Is, that Dennis is, that's says, what a coffee table coasters. is. Savages. Mm. It is savages. Who said that? Uh, Dez. Oh, Dez. Smash Adams says, where are the coasters? What the fuck? Right. Wow. ZG says, they keep the humidity at 0% so they don't have to worry about condensation. Nice. <laughs> also, yeah, we it's why we keep it nice lips and dry. Are so dry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, all right. yeah, yeah. Guys. We did. We did sort of talk about my dry lips on the last one. I did. Joe Joe Star wants to know: Do we? Do you even respect wood? Yeah. Do I respect wood? <laughs> Joe, yeah, that's. Uh, are you? That's one Joe, of the most Matt, offensive things you can can say. Yeah, yeah, that's. I, are you serious? Like, are you? Here just, we like, go. Here we serious go. Serious right now. Megan's working. Yeah, Megan's and working. Now it's just the bros. And you almost weren't here. Yes. But you, here you are. Here we I am. I'm, almost... I'm literally in wardrobe of, of Mythic Quest. I'm so going to go gonna right go, from are you here really? onto, Straight a, there. onto a scene. Yeah, okay. It's exciting. So your guy dresses not dissimilarly to the way you dress. Well, the sneakers, I, I basically no, so I start stealing. The, these are... Um, <laughs> yeah. I've got I of a, it's sort of like a cult leader look. Oh, uh, that is yeah. a very cult yeah. leader yeah. look. Uh, Cult leader would probably have their own type of sneaker, yeah. right? Like, no, no, well, no, no. There what was, was the Heaven's the, Gate. The yeah, the Heaven's Gate. Heaven's yeah. Gate guys. They they all they wore these, Nike high like, tops, didn't yeah, they? It was like they, similar to these. Yeah, that was part of getting into the through the gate. I guess you know when when they were all lifted to heaven. You know, yeah. if somebody caught you with a pair of Adidas on, they'd be like, mm. no, <laughs> you no. know. And we and you know what the funny thing is, we act like that's ridiculous. As if all the other funny hats and weird shit that people wear for other religions yeah. that have been around for thousands of years yeah, are at least they equally had religious. Good shoes, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <shoes>. yeah exactly. <laughs> like there's yeah. that like hard Their God hard them. dress shoe of a lot of religions where it's like make sure you wear a hard dress shoe and a very thin sock. Yeah, you know, that's, like, yeah a right, thin sock. Right. What's with the thin sock? What's with the thin sock, man? People are gonna freeze to death. Mm -hmm. They're gonna their their toes are gonna fall off. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, for God, a lot of cold countries here where the, where they're. Demanding the thin sock. Mm -hmm. Thin sock and a thin or, shoe. Or just cover yourself in fabric. Just be draped in fabrics and fabrics and fabrics. Why did God want you so fabric covered? He definitely want you bedazzled with oh, lots he loves of jewels. That. Yeah, and yeah, such. yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly on your the hats, ones, the on leaders. Your, on your hands. The well, leaders. The leaders. Some, the leaders, God, the leaders, some the leaders. gods want you covered in jewels and some gods want you in no jewels and just sort of drab. Meek robes and yeah. yeah well the followers yes yeah 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 Clear. can somebody explain I, I don't really understand this bible verse and you 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 did you went to a, a school where you, yeah yeah school. you guys sure. studied it a lot and i i went to church a lot but i didn't actually study it in school um the meek shall inherit the earth yeah that's a i would have thought that it would have been the rich shall inherit the earth the meek are going to do great in the afterlife mm. Because I thought that was the whole thing. It's, I it think like, it's a, also a part of the promise when the meek, when the meek were like, "Wait a second, we got the numbers," and then the, yeah. the 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 strong were like, "Well, no, the people in power were like, no, you have the heaven," and then and then they were like, "Okay, that's good," and that worked for a while, and then yeah. the meek were like, "But can we have it here too?" And they were like, "Fuck, all right, let's just promise it to them." Yeah, yeah. Right. Let's I, tell it's them. It's a great that way they, to stay rich is to tell a poor person that to, the best thing you can be is poor. Meek. Yeah. 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 Stay yeah. meek, and, and you, and you, you will, will eventually yes. yeah. inherit the earth. Is not that today. The idea? Yeah. No. 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 Not I, today. Down we're the line. On it. Down, down the line. line. Maybe after you're dead. Um. Maybe well, generations from now. Yes, your meek uh, grandchildren. Um. Will, but the uh, problem is inheriting the earth. That's like that's some serious wealth, and then you're no longer meek. So it's a. It's also a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Like, how does that work? How's that how does work? that shake out? Once you've inherited the earth, you're, you're no like, longer fuck, meek. fuck, man, I used no. to be meek, but I have the whole earth now. Yeah, and now I can't. <laughs> and it's tough to stay meek. And now I can't go to heaven, so I'm, I got I should just give Bro, it back. Bro, you're still meek? Oh, man, he's sold out. He ain't meek anymore. <laughs> he's sold out. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the earth and shit. Yeah. That's how I feel. We, we were meek before Megan made us do the ads, and now we're... No, we've, inherited the earth. we've inherited the now earth. Now we have inherited the earth. Um, another very manipulative one where the rich people were like, hey, listen, I know it looks like I've got everything going for me, and, and I do, but it's going to be really hard for me to get into heaven. 
Yeah. You know, so <laughs> yeah. once I die, that's where this whole thing falls apart for me. And everything is, you know, great, great for you. Great for you. So, so my you, advice you, you, to you, you, you stay there. My advice to you would be stay under my shoe. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You basically, just figure right? it out. Religion. I like that you. What's hard to figure out which parts um, metaphor and which parts literal, and that's the fun of the Bible is that like it yeah, was yeah. all when it was written, it was all literal, and then oh, slowly over time, <laughs> slowly yeah. over time, we're like, yeah. that part's yeah, yeah, metaphor clearly, clearly. You well, know, where's the Bible land on ghosts? I was th- I was having a conversation about ghosts the other day. Well, the ultimate ghost, right? Is is I mean, but he's the, part of the Holy, Holy Trinity. Holy ghost. Sure, the, so, they straight up call the man they, a ghost. They, they used <laughs> to call it the, whole, the yes. Holy Ghost. I got to think about ghosts. So oh, you know, a lot okay. of a lot of people believe in ghosts, and that's fine. But like, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. You know, like it's, we, every, to each their own. But they only believe in like human ghosts, right? People aren't like, man, I saw the ghost of a worm the other day, and it freaked <laughs> me out. You know what I mean? Don't like, hear a lot of that. Uh, the yeah. ghost of a worm. Now, is your point? Uh, why is it that only humans have ghosts and why is there Isn't not there the ghost a of a worm? there's certain kind or? of arrogance there, I think, uh, and maybe kind of blows the whole theory up that like there are only, only human souls can be trapped and walking around. Maybe people are like, oh, I saw the ghost of my cat. the other, Like maybe, but like at what point did they stop? It's like I killed a fly and then an hour later I saw the ghost of that fly <laughs> and it came back to be like, I wasn't ready to die. A tragedy happened. You know, like- There's a great idea in this that. and I love it. You, I, you never Forget that. Yeah, yeah. This this seems like a good uh, this for the, Pixar ra- for the film. writers' room. I don't know. This we could put in Sunny. <laughs> You're oh, thinking okay. anime. Right. This, right. uh, okay. this could segue into some fun, fun thing. I came yeah. in. I saw a ghost. I who saw was a ghost. It? Your and grandfather, then, who, your great grandfather. Who was it? Yeah. yeah. Who was it? Huh? It was the Jerry tapeworm. The, the tapeworm. Nah, yeah. It was <laughs> Jerry brings <laughs> tapeworm. Tapeworm. <laughs> yeah, he's back. Well, he's not. He's not in me. He wants in. He wants in. He wants yeah. him, but he's he's yeah, he, upset. He's, uh, and you know, he's I guess he's in purgatory, you know. We yeah, yeah. he can't pass to the other side until I make <laughs> peace with this tapeworm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. That, that's a that's that is a that's line. a good jumping off. Okay. Point. All right. All and right. then you get the whole like paranormal people which are fascinating and yes, trying to right. get like you get a little inside peek in their world. Well, it's and, also great to call them in and then Reveal to them once they're there with all their equipment that it's a that it's a tapeworm they're looking for. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they're like, wait, what? Yeah. And then they they have to explain that it's only. And then humans. they find it, and then they have to confess, like, look, this whole thing was kind of a fraud, but uh, now I'm not so sure because yeah. I, I I saw Jerry. I'll be honest with you, the only ghost I've ever actually seen is was this tapeworm that you spoke of. <laughs> yeah, they have to admit it. Yeah. I've guys, I've heard segueing a little bit. I've heard from a number of people out on the street or even people at work at this other show that I do, um, or on the weekends. I was in Disneyland this past weekend. Uh, I do another show, yeah, on Apple called Mythic Quest. Oh, um, shit, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, How I was, was Disneyland? Season three. Congratulations, Dry man. Disneyland was a good time? Uh, Disneyland was amazing. You went to Disneyland? I went to Disneyland. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. with, some, with some friends, and it was amazing. And there were so many people there. Obviously, it was Disneyland. And I heard over and over and over again, loving the podcast. Mm. Good. Loving the podcast. Good. Okay. And I always ask people what it is that they like about it, just because I'm interested yeah. in it. Uh-huh. And yeah. 90% of the people say that they listen to it on the way to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, hear, I hear more listeners than uh, than I hear creeps, but I know you're out there because we see the numbers you're watching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, people listen to us on their way to work and they're on their way home from work. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it feels like they're hanging out with their friends. Hanging out with their buds. Yeah. And I like that thing. because That's I feel thing. like I'm hanging out with my friends. Well, you we are. are. I have more fun on the podcast having conversations like this because I feel like I'm talking to my friends as opposed to talking about the episodes themselves. Mm-hmm. Even though I recognize the yeah. fans do like yeah. what we're and it about. is interesting. Yeah. And uh, boy, this this one uh, is a heck of an episode. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and uh, how do we talk about? It? How do we? Yeah. Well, well we can. Uh, I, we can say this again. Making sure that this podcast does not become the uh, an apology tour because that's just going to get boring, and there's no need for that either. But we have recognized that at the at the time we truly felt um, that that was that that was a word that was used commonly and that made sense. Well, well, but it was also a word that was abused by people who you know, are awful people yes. and our characters are awful, awful people. Yes. But this was one of the episodes yes. where it, totally. it deviated from the characters to the way that we were using it. So casually mm. it, to me made it feel like the filmmakers, us at the time yeah. were not conscious of what we were saying and how pain- painful that could be for people. Cause is it is correct. a derogatory term, that is but correct. we didn't know that at the time. Well, I mean, that is correct. 
it was much more commonly used at the time, let's yes. face it. You oh, know, yeah. and then I think over the what has it been, a decade more? Way longer. Yeah, since that <laughs> since we did since we did that, yeah. it's become fifteen years. Fifteen years, dude. 15 yeah, years, it's bro. become you know, we've as a society said, yeah. let's let's get rid of this term. Yeah, let's not do that um, anymore. But by the way, if you recall, we weren't even gonna have person in the title. We were going yes. to say "sweet D dates the yeah, yeah. and R word." Yeah, yes. it was almost. Like, yeah, and, was, but then what we what we realized was th at the time that was the derogatory, and we did use it, and and the character did use it in the episode right. once, um, which was the abbreviated version of it. But when but we to title we thought, it that is different because that's the filmmakers yes. titling something, right? Right. But yeah. then, but what we thought at the time was that the full word was something that was acceptable even in the community right? as right. being, and it that wasn't until later where we realized that that was not the case. And I think culturally we, it was accepted as well. So it is what it is. But ultimately yeah. the par the characters get their comeuppance for totally. using the word so yeah. liberally and, and asking a uh, little Kev, mm -hmm. And then he eviscerates them. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, and yes, and that's why continually when we're asked, hey, how do you get away with this or whatever, the, we recognize that our audience can watch something and recognize that it's of a time and place and that they know where we stood at the time and where we stand now. And that's how we get away with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We say it a lot in the episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Each and, time. And, I, uh, yep, me too. Just cringe. just cringe a little bit, right? Like just... Feel it go up and your yet, spine. There's so much great stuff in the episode. <clears throat> yeah, it's super funny. Yeah. I mean, that's really the funny. Between, <laughs> it's really funny. I mean, Kyle, the, he's, Kyle's amazing. Is amazing. Yeah. Can you imagine anyone else playing that part? No. I mean, Kyle completely nails that role. Yeah. yeah. He was like a skateboarder and he, he, had something with his eye. He was blind in one eye, right? Like he'd had an accident. Oh, something. Yeah, I don't remember what it was that happened, but yeah. And he just dove into that character and nails it. Walks that fine line of you can't tell if he's yeah, if, if uh, there's little, something going on there. Something or going not. on. Yeah, or not. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it, that, it, the whole episode was born out of us always never wanting to make fun of people with uh, developmental disabilities, but it was to make fun of. Uh, rappers who had that affected, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. white the rappers that had that affectation. We were, yeah. and we had heard a few. And I love Eminem. It wasn't really Eminem. It was a couple of like low grade Eminems that were coming out around the time, and you couldn't understand what the what the fuck they were talking about right. in interviews and things like that. And we were like, oh, they sound. You it know, does fill in the word, <laughs> and so let's yeah. go. Let's have a go at them. Yeah. What if what if there was someone like that, and we weren't sure? Yeah. Yeah, you know. I mean, it's one of those premises <laughs> and then D, that- And D's gold, gold digging, it, clearly gold digging through the whole, through yeah, the whole episode. Yeah, Which is I, a lot I also of fun. do love like that, that I say that he really is, you know, I don't want to use the word, but that he really is, you know, and then later I'm like, okay, fine. He what? He's not, he's not. And she's like, why would you do that? And then she leaves and I'm like, and, and you guys are like, what, so he wasn't, so he's not? And, then and I'm say, like, oh, no, he is. He is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he, he definitely is. He definitely oh, is. no, he definitely is. Yeah. 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 Well, that's that's yeah. funny. That was a good joke. Uh, what are you going to do? That's a good joke. It's funny. But it's but, super it, fucking funny. And yeah. I think it's okay. Like, if we had to do it now, you know, we the characters would dance around the usage of the word and it would be just as funny. Yeah. And, you know, so those are the adjustments we you, you just, make. But, like, the characters would be, would be like not wanting to say the R word, but that was the intent and you can make yeah. a joke out of that. But yeah. yeah, or we would have, you know, a character amongst the group who was like, mm, that's not, please don't use that word. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there would be an opposing view, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you can still like, you know, we have to still be able to tackle these kinds of subjects and, and, and everything. But, uh, you know, again, I think we're a little bit more conscious of making sure that it's clear that we, the filmmakers are not like biased, but, What's also interesting, what's so damn funny is the other storyline, <laughs> you know, with everything from starting a band to the spandex to the Dayman song, like, and do you remember when we cut it together where like, we were like, well, we dropped the ball on this we, one. We it blew just, it. It doesn't, why did we feel that way? Well, I can't remember <sighs> why is, we felt that way. As opposed to the one we just watched uh, two ago, The Gang Sells Out, uh, which I feel like totally holds up. I feel like this one, hey, even just narratively is so silly. Whereas the gang yeah. sells out is silly in the way that Sonny is, but you understand everything and why it's happening and it all makes sense. This 
it, it is clearly us in the writer's room being like, you know what, let's just justify them getting into a band. It makes no sense at all that we, that my motivation, for example, Max's motivation, for example, is we don't need to learn how to play instruments at all. Let's just get up here and look cool and get a crowd in right. here. And like, I kind of buy that, but it's also just bullshit. Oh, I don't know. That that didn't that didn't hit my bullshit meter. You know how like some things yeah, do, yeah, some sure. things don't. I, I'm like that sort of fell within the arrogance of the characters for me, where I'm like, oh, they're just cocky enough and dumb enough to think that they can do it. Like I think a lot of people see any kind of like whether it's acting or music or you know juggling, stand up, whatever the heck, and think, yeah, I could do that if I just tried. And it's like. Yeah, but you have to try for 30 years, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, because, yeah, yeah. like, you're you're going out. And so I think, to me, it falls within the way these characters might think, which is to be like, yeah, I can make a band. Like, how good do you have to be? That scene where you, Charlie has got the um, blanket over his head and he's clearly been <laughs> huffing uh, paint the entire, and you come over to his house. I remember that shooting that scene. Very, it was the first, scene the first scene we shot of season three. Yeah. That's correct. I, I remember it so vividly. And I remember n me laughing hysterically. I remember nobody else laughing, which is all like in the crew, which is always a great sign because for whatever reason, I, I don't know why sometimes there are things that are very specific to what we're trying to do. And, yeah. and out of context, a lot of the crew doesn't read the scripts. So out of context, it's just a, what is what? happening? Yeah. You have no idea right. what's happening. And it was so funny to me at the time. Yeah. I remember, you know, so Rob Rosell and Scott Martyr wrote that episode and they came up with those lyrics for the song. Yeah. And it was Dayman, fighter of the nightman, champion of the sun, master of karate and friendship for everyone. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, that's so fucking funny and random. Yeah. And we had a little Casio keyboard in mm -hmm. the office yeah. that, you know, you could put on the setting that it fills in the chords, you know? So I just like, like pressed that one key was like you know and just amazing and then Dennis just I like that yeah yeah and then I just started singing the melody and you started singing the ah ahs and that there was no that is exactly what happened yeah. Like we were like, let's let's fuck, let's see what we fi can figure out or whatever. And you were like tinkering with the keyboard, yeah. And then you just started kind of singing the thing, and then I did the ah ah ahs, and I also wasn't that from the Queen song. Well, yeah. So <sighs> or Flash Gordon was or the Flash thing. Gordon. It was yeah. Flash. I, at the time, uh. um, I was so my buddy Sam Whitwer, who's a musician, um, wanted to do some live performances from an album that he his self-published album that he'd put out and um <laughs> you know so me and some other people were like it, we put like a band together and we were just t like we i don't know we only did like maybe eight shows or something we would call the crash tones and what the thing that we opened every show with was the flash gordon theme song the queen queen's flash gordon theme song from the 1980 flash gordon and um it was like inspired by that for sure like it felt it felt like Dayman was like, you know, like a superhero. So it, it kind of felt like it, it tracked in that, or like it, I don't know, it made sense to it me. It's funny time. how music can be like, something's working, something clicks right away and grabs you and is catchy. And then you find one other little element to add to it, like the ahs, and it puts it over the top and it makes the whole thing work. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you see the documentary on the back backup singers, like yeah. The, uh, the woman who for the Rolling Stones, yeah. Um, it's they like, like ten, call ten her feet up. from stardom or something like that. Yeah, and they call her yeah. up at like four in the morning, and mm -hmm. and they're like, it's mm -hmm. like, can you come in? Can you sing these lines? And she's like, oh, okay, rape, murder, it's yeah. just a shot away. And you're like, well, there's that song, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. like it just, yeah. And then in fact, in that song, her voice cracks at one point, yeah. and she thought, well, there's no way they're gonna use that like let me do it let me do it again where i i do it right and phil specter was like nope that's the one that goes in it's amazing yeah just recorded in that, 20 minutes or something yeah like the creative process is a crazy mysterious elusive thing Well, we've got to do another ad because Megan has to pay her rent. Mm -hmm. She has sent instructions that we must do this. So yes. okay. you don't make okay. it blame Megan. No, okay. let's do it. I'm not going to have a Here problem with that. Uh, guys, we'd like you to know that this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Yep. Yeah, uh, BetterHelp is pretty fantastic. If you have not heard of it, it is a secure online therapy service that offers video, 
phone, and live chat sessions with a licensed professional therapist. Yeah, life, I, life is fucking hard. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Life <laughs> is hard. It's hard. I'm, I'm hard. very happy that we're sponsored um, by BetterHelp uh, online because I mean, mental health is a, a very important part of the, the, the worldwide discussion. I agree. I think uh, therapy is uh, essential for people. Like you go to the gym, you work on your muscles, you uh, go to the dentist, you fix your teeth, and uh, sometimes you need to help your brain too. And there's no shame in that game, you know? No, no way. No. I feel like t like just being here and being able to talk to you guys is a form of therapy for me. Um, and so I, I would like to implore people out there, if you're struggling with grief, relationships, stress, yeah. Uh, anxiety. I'm seeing a lot of anxiety. And in listen, the world. I understand sometimes it sucks to go sit in a waiting room. That's an uncomfortable mm -hmm. situation, waiting for someone else before you finish. And then they come out, then you're there, they see you. It's a whole, you know, it's an awkward thing. Yeah, no, but you don't have to do that here because BetterHelp uh, assesses your needs and pairs you with a therapist in less than 48 hours. It's really hard to find a therapist that quickly, guys. And then if you don't vibe with that therapist, you can switch for free. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, it's also more affordable than tra traditional online therapy. That's a big problem. Work, you know, because therapy ain't cheap. And guys, always Sunny Podcast listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash sunny. Mm -hmm. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash sunny. Again, right? H-E-L-P. Yeah. So if you guys yes. don't know how to spell help, then you've got other problems. Well, if uh, for the creeps that are watching, they can see it right there because we're going to put it on the Screen. Okay. Are we? Right. I don't yeah, think yeah. we're gonna put a we're, Chiron there. No. Yeah, we're gonna put a Chiron. All right. We? Well, go okay. there, check Let's it out, see. and uh, you know, tell them we sent you. Hey guys, you know what I don't get asked enough? No. What? No. What's that? <laughs> Whether or not I shave my balls. Really. Yeah. Not, not no, getting that question very often? No, no one ever no. asks you that, like in an interview or anything? No, no. Like at a, dinner? At and the... I'm always like, when is somebody going to ask me about my, my balls and whether I shave them or not? And it's always like, oh, is Dennis a psychopath? You know, yeah. it, 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 what's the waitress's name? Right, yeah. right. Well, hey, you're luck, my friend, because I think we're going to get to talk about your balls for at least a minute. Oh, right good. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Just yeah, good. yeah. Thankfully, our new friends at Manscaped, the global leaders in below the waist grooming, uh, are sponsoring this podcast, and they have just the thing to keep your weeds properly whacked. It you is the ultra smooth package, okay? A specialized groin shaving kit to help you buff, shave, and protect your nether regions. You know, it's a sensitive subject to talk about, but it's the most important decision you could make today. Mm-hmm. Your yeah, balls. ladies and gentlemen, mostly gentlemen, uh, direct your attention to manscaped.com and use the code SUNNY for 20% plus free shipping on the Lawnmower 4.0. Yes. Brand new ultra smooth package. Don't you want to be smooth? Do you want to be a bear or do you want to be an otter? I want to be an otter. I want to. I don't want to be a seal. I don't want to be skin. Mm -hmm. I want to be trimmed, mm -hmm. which I think is fair. So, okay. but you're oh, going to have amazing. the chance to get that good ball shine with the ultra smooth package. You know, that's that's if you're into that package. If you want ultra smooth, you can get it down there, and then you can use the crop exfoliator all over. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but let me ask you something: Are you guys shaving your your actual ball sack or just the top? Yeah, I get. I get. You it get all, all of it. I get it all, yeah. Yeah, because there's some sometimes there's errant hairs from. Yeah, yeah, you don't want. Yeah, you don't want that situation down there. Well, there's there a lot of moving pieces down there, you know. But that crop exfoliator can help soothe, clear, and and just get, and keep your your groin skin refreshed. You know what it's actually great at is reducing ingrown hairs. Is that right? Oh yeah, that's yeah, not where you want an ingrown hair. No, 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 no. You don't want hair growing into your balls. No, you want the hair to grow out and out only, and then you want to take it off. Uh, with Manscaper. Yes, you want and to remove all of the hair. Finally, boys, it's shaving time. The Crop Shaver has three precision blades with extra wide lubricating strips and a pivoting head, so no man gets left behind. Okay. When you hang, dong. All right, you get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SUNNY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code SUNNY at manscaped.com. And say hello to your new sweet D. You being Bob Dylan and oh, yeah. singing those lyrics, <laughs> yeah. which that okay. So as and maybe I'm maybe I'm misremembering. If if I am, please please correct me. The whole idea of the nightman creeping into your house, mm -hmm. coming inside you, and you becoming him. <laughs> 
not only were you making all of those lyrics up at the time, but just the concept of that happening. That was not done in the writer's room. That happened live. There was that a camera true. pointed at you and true. you were just riffing. Yep. But so not only was that really funny and incredible to come up with in the moment like that, but then we took the lore that you created yeah, in that made song and made a whole musical, musical out of about it. it. Yeah, yeah. No, that was, I remember we just kind of let the cameras roll and I had the keyboard. It was like, no, okay. you specific, what you specifically requested, you were like, let's do, let me just do a couple. We're just, just let the cameras roll and let me do my thing and uh -huh. let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens. And one of those takes was that. Yeah. I remember that was like, first time Adam Scalina, our cameraman who we've had since season one, was like laughing, shaking. I had laughing. the back well, of the frame. I fucked, yeah, fucked you guys, it all yeah, up. you, yeah, you I were, I remember we had to cut around your laughter. Cause it's Internal really dumb it's and really so funny. funny. It's so stupid, but yeah. so funny. But yeah. so funny yeah. in the way that you were you were free flowing and rhyming it all the way through was there was no way you had thought about that no. <laughs> before you step up on that stage. That are, I, I don't know. Had you? I, mean, I don't sharing I each other remember. like loving brothers. No, no, way. no, no I, don't, we, and, I don't think so. And that shot of Dan, <laughs> Danny of Frank at the end, which like just ends the ends <laughs> yeah, the scene. Yeah, is yeah, yeah, so Danny. funny. Yeah, that look on his face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. I that was a ton of fun. I, I mean, that was one of the, the well, that, like what a great thing we were getting to do, right? Like mm -hmm. we we made the show and we sort of were finding our feet. And then we would create these scenarios for ourselves to be like, okay, here's a scenario, here's a funny situation. We know this is gonna be lyrics gone wrong and go free and and to allow ourselves the freedom for each one of our characters or performers to come on the show to be like, all right, let's just, I don't know, turn your brain off and let it rip. And we have gotten so much good stuff out of mm -hmm. doing that. Oh yeah, you know? just letting it rip. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, well, people ask us still all the time, like how much of the show is improv? And I'm like, it's not really improv as much as it is like a lot of ad-libbing and stuff, but there are certainly moments of improv. And it's one of the benefit, like, I, you know, for people who are not in the film and television business, they may not realize like most things, I mean, like if you're doing a play, you're doing Tennessee Williams, you don't change the, those words. Like they're, yeah. they're, they're perfect and they are the way they are and they're sacred in a way. And so, you know, you say them exactly as written. Uh, TV and film, there's usually a little bit more leeway depending on the writer and the director, right? Like if it's Quentin Tarantino, he's probably like, no, say it the way I wrote it. And yeah, he's right. Yeah, or the Coen brothers or Aaron Sorkin Karen, or somebody. Coen you know, brothers, like, right? Yeah. Who who just are like pretty word perfect, right? You got to be pretty word perfect with those yeah. guys. Although it's hard to believe that Jeff Bridges' performance in Big Lebowski, there weren't some moments where he wasn't riffing I've a little bit. I've heard him talk about it and they're like, no, it was all, all scripted out oh, to, the, to the um and man. the ah. Uh. That's just, that just, just shows you how incredible the Coen brothers are and how incredible Jeff Bridges was that, that it sounds, that is, that it sounds like you know, ad libbing and improvised, and but John Goodman. I mean, in that yeah, in that movie, so like pff, unreal, like where he's about to blow up and then he and catches then he, himself like many then, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, it's one of the privileges of getting to do this show is that because we write it and we are the creators, we don't have to. You know, usually with another show, like I would go out of respect for the writer or the or the showrunner, I would go and I would say, hey, I, I'm thinking of like messing with this a little bit. Like, can we do one where I just kind of like riff a little bit, you know, and I would mm -hmm. do that on AP Bio all the time. I, and we eventually got to the point where Mike would just kind of let me, you know, do my thing sometimes. But what's, what's AP Bio? That's a, uh, a show that I did on NBC for two years and then on Peacock for two years. Four years. Yeah, we did four oh. seasons. Sounds cool. Depending on the movie, depending on the style of comedy, sometimes you can just open it up and sometimes you can't. For our show, it really worked well to act it in a similar style to how we shoot it, right? In the Coen Brothers, it's very structured shots, you know, almost um, uh, Hitchcock-esque in terms of like, these are very stylized, the camera's not, well, the earlier movies, the camera's moving around a bunch, but um, with us, it's cross covered. Things are dirty. They're shot over the shoulder. The characters seem connected. It's loose, and you want the comedy to be spontaneous and loose, and it creates a really good illusion of reality. You kind of really believe these are real people. This yeah. is how they talk, and, and that you're sitting in the room with them. Yeah, right. Where where um, this show on Apple that we do called Mythic Quest, Mister Mythic Quest. 
Yeah, it's a show. Like you're saying Mr. with a lisp. <laughs> Mr. 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 Quest. <laughs> That's the show? Mr. Quest. <laughs> anyway, Mr. we have these very composed sort of cinematic shots every yes. once in a while. And what you realize is people ad-libbing or improv in those shots doesn't work for a number of reasons. And sometimes it's subconscious where you, you can kind of feel that they're making it up. Oh, like, because the it's shot, a, like the shot's clean, but the dialogue's messy yes, and it doesn't work. But when we go to say Steadicam or what we do on Sunny, which is handheld and kind of uh -huh. rocky and shaky, then it feels like, oh, I'm a fly on the wall. I'm not watching a cinematic piece. I'm sitting in the room with those people. Mm -hmm. And then it works. I don't know. I don't know if it's a conscious thing or a subconscious thing. Well, I do know that I do know that when we first created Sunny, one of the things that we were pretty adamant about was cross covering. Right? I mean, it was very inspired by by the by the British office and by Curb Your Enthusiasm. I was convinced that I was like on Curb. I mean, they're improvising. They've got to be shooting five cameras at the same time. I still don't to this day really know how they shoot it, but you know. So that was always the idea from the beginning. It was like, okay, this is going to be scripted, but I just I want it to feel like the actors don't even know what they're going to say next. Mm -hmm. I wanted, I just wanted it to feel really spontaneous. I wanted it to feel improvised, even if it wasn't. Um, and, you know, hence the, the cross coverage and the bad eye lines and the shitty cameras and, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, the benefit of that was that we got to, you know, do something a little different. I mean, you know, some people say the, the show is just us yelling over each other and they're not totally they're not wrong. not totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that first scene, that opening scene, anytime in the early years when you had all five of us in a room at the same time, we're just talking over each other, filling yeah. in each other's lines, filling in the gaps of, so there's no silence. There's no, 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 God forbid. We got better at that. As God forbid. Along, but, yeah. But Did that, we? but the scene, I think, I think so. <laughs> the scene uh, between the two of you, when you find the song, mm -hmm. that was clearly covered by at least two cameras mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or maybe mm -hmm. three. I think because there's that. there's like kismet that happens where you find the clap you you were you get yes. into the beat and then you find the clap at the exact right time yeah which was and I remember it being so satisfying at the time uh -huh. satisfying in the edit and then now it's been 50 12 13 years since I've seen it again it's still satisfying it all feels very, it all feels weirdly real I mean clearly it isn't because it's so heightened and so strange you know <laughs> although. I, I bet most people would think that that song that you made up on the spot was 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 also not not improvised, but it it was, which is just crazy. I also think going back to the improv thing for one second, like you know, we we never improv. Like I think improv, the idea of improv is like an audience full of people, and someone says, uh, "Here's a uh, situation: peanut butter jelly yeah. and taxes." And then they go up on stage and they create a situation about peanut butter and jelly and taxes, mm -hmm. like. That's never what we're doing. We have we not only do we know the scene, we know what our characters want within the scene. Yeah, we have it perfectly scripted to the point where there's no improv necessary. By perfectly, I mean like in our minds, you know that this is good enough. We don't want to be in a situation where we have to improv. And even if I'm doing a song like that, I'm sure I've I've I have a few ideas going into the scene about what's going to be funny. Yeah. It's not so incredibly spontaneous. I mean, not to take away from some good improv, but like it's yeah, really, some touch points that you want to hit. It's structured improv. It's yeah. like I don't know. It's like we really have a sense of what we want, and then we l open it up and say, well, "What's the funniest way to get what we want?" But again, think about what a privilege it is to 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 do that. And and I know that like and we've have all the been time on... to do it because we shot in a yeah. way that's so fast and furious. You know, you haven't had a, a two hour lighting setup because you have a crazy dolly move you know like like here's the cameras go can you talk about that so well on on horrible bosses say for instance right uh -huh. where clearly you guys were riffing and having fun and all that kind of stuff and it's a very mm -hmm. different shooting environment where you probably weren't cross covering a lot maybe occasionally i don't know i mean but when you've got like i i don't i mean again with my my peacock show my very successful four season peacock show ap bio you know we would shoot one side at a time uh, it's okay. I'll I'll send you the I'll send you a link. AP Bio. That's such a weird title. Advanced Horrible Bosses. I know. I mean, that was a it was a huge hit. That was a big hit. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah, second yeah. one. You know. Yeah, nice and yeah. Uh, <laughs> Second one. Fine. <laughs> By today's standards, the money was right yeah, though. Yeah. Um, no, Actually, I, I enjoyed the second one. I didn't say, no, yeah, no, yeah, I didn't say, sure, yeah. yeah, no, I, hey, man. Anyway, um, uh, you know, where you're shooting one side at a time. Yeah. 
And then you, you know, you're shooting one side of a conversation yeah. and you're riffing, you're improvising, right? And then you've got to stop, yeah. turn everything around, which takes 20 to 30 minutes to turn all the lights around, come back on the other guy. Then you've hope, you hope you've got a really good script co coordinator uh -huh. uh, or who's script supervisor. Who's written down a funny improv. Who's written that, down some so of the better improvs. you remember to redo it. Because then you got to do it on the other side. It's much tougher to do it that way. Yeah. I think with Horrible Bosses, if I remember correctly, we did a lot of three shots, you know, and yeah. two shots where all three of us were in the frame. Yes. Or it would be like, you know, we're getting interrogated by a police officer. The police officer says the same thing every yeah. time. But and, you guys and are And all... we open up our end a little bit. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, I think they did a good job of of where to let, let us dirty up the dialogue and, and where to keep it clean. But yeah, yeah it's much tougher because I'd done a movie, the first feature movie I got to do was Going the Distance. Mm -hmm. And that was my first time on a set where uh, where we were doing that, where we would improv a ton, you know, me and Sudeikis and Justin Long. And then we would have to remember what we did to turn around to try to- Yeah, because we don't do that on Sunny. No. We it's... just shoot it all at once. And, and, and if we improvise something- you know, we'll we'll usually build on it or do something different the next time. But either way, you know, if you and I are improvising something, we're both on camera at the same time. So when you get in the edit, you get to cut together a scene with all the actors in it. Yeah, you don't. You're not. You know what I mean. You're not like trying to piece together as. I mean, we do piece things together, but you you don't have to do it as much on our show. On on uh, Mister Quest. Um, no, Mister 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 Quest. Mister Quest. Um, do you? Yeah, how are you balancing that when you when because obviously you're shooting it in much yeah. more like a movie, uh, and here's a complete. Uh, this is an admission that I have nothing to do with it. I've said it before. Um, uh, you have every. I, we've established this. You have everything times, to do. Yeah. You, we've you've created the characters that launched them. Then I walked away, sure. and then you guys have been doing it. Yeah. Um, but uh, how are you balancing that? Uh, sort of like I'm sure you're letting Hornsby riff and cut yes. loose. So then when he comes up with something great and you've shot one side or you, you have your uh, script script coordinator writing down the improvs and then- We do, but because um, because David has so much experience, I have so much experience, it, we all in this room have so much experience, you kind of remember which, yeah. what works and what doesn't. Yeah. But sometimes we'll say, okay, re remember to get this. We do, we do have certain scenes that we realize we have to cross cover because the improv is important. And then we have actually, we have other actors too, mm -hmm who aren't as necessarily comfortable. And it doesn't mean they're not great. It's right. just not, they're fantastic on the show. They just they just would rather stick to the script. Yeah. And if you throw out something, they're happy to say it, but they're, it's not their first instinct to do so. Here's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. How do online comments affect you guys personally? Uh, I, I love, I, I, look, I think, I have no problem. Like, I'm not one of those people who's like, no, I don't know. I don't ever read reviews of sure. stuff that I do. You know, some 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 actors are just like, I, you, I can't read that stuff. It's too toxic or whatever. Uh, whether it's good or bad. Um, I, I'm not that way. I It's like, I weirdly want the feedback. I like the feedback. Okay. I Now, look, I but will if someone, admit- But if someone said something and got on your skin to sit with you for a few days or like- No, what? no, no. It'll sit, it will sit with-, with uh, it could sit with me for a couple minutes, but then it's gone, you know? Mm. Now I will admit, however, if, if after we did an episode, after an episode of Sunny aired or whatever, and I, if I went on Twitter and the vast majority of the comments were negative, sure, uh, that, that that's going to mess that anybody would fuck up. with me. Yeah. That would fuck with me. But you know, most of them are really good. And then there's the occasional, you know, somebody like, man, your show has not been good since season six. You know, mm -hmm. you're just like, Thanks for the feedback, man. Appreciate <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Rob? You seem unfazed by these kind of things. Um, no, I think I'm actively unfazed, meaning like right. I'm doing work. It's a practice. Make, it's a practice. Yeah, yeah. 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 I would, yeah. I, same, same. Yeah, yeah. It's, it never feels good to have somebody criticize you in some way, but I think you just look at who it is that's doing so. So if you were to come in and say, hey, I don't think what you're doing is good, I would listen to that because- I value your opinion, uh, but if, I, if it's just some, uh, sorry, I meant both of you, but I was looking at you. You looked directly at me. I was using so consciously he, ignored you. He asked the question. He asked the question. Okay, okay. all right. We'll but you, if both we'll of you guys, because this is what we do all the time. If you came to me and said, hey, we 
either see this creatively or your behavior or whatever it might be, or mm -hmm. we have a professional issue with you, which we've navigated over the years, uh, then I take that very seriously because I value your opinions. Um, but if I look on Twitter and it's just some rando dickhead who wants to chime in, I don't get flying fuck. Yeah. But yeah. Mostly because I just simply don't, I don't know who they are, yeah. so I don't value their opinion. Right. Yeah. And then if in terms of criticism, the only time I get, because I do read reviews for new things that come out. I haven't read a Sunny review in forever, but but I but I do re read reviews, say, for Mr. Quest. And uh, the only time, which are all very good, the, the only time I get upset is when I feel that they're lazy, mm -hmm. that, they're, that they're not understanding yeah. what it is we're trying to do because they, they're stupid mm -hmm. and lazy. And sometimes we'll get criticism where... I bring it to Megan and David and I say, I think they're right. But this is somebody who's taking the time to actually look and try to understand what we're doing. They have an opinion about it. And then regardless of what their opinion might be, if if they point out that, oh, I believe the show was going for this and they failed and here's why, mm -hmm. and they're right from my perspective, I'll bring it to them sure. and say, hey, I think we can be better. I think that's valuable. Yeah. Well, any any feedback that allows you to make something better is 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 valuable. Yeah, um, and that's different from trolling, which is just- Very different, yeah, yeah very different. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I have often been frustrated, and we've talked about this, you know, off camera many times, but uh, by reviews of Sunny, even positive reviews, of Sonny, where they talk about the show in a way that makes it sound unappealing to people who might be turned, you know, they're like, they're like, and these guys are so funny and they 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 cross the line and it's yeah. so gross and they're disgusting and, you know, they're perverts and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. And it's like, if you don't know the show and you're reading that review, mm -hmm. you're gonna go, totally. this is not my type so of somebody just, if uh, read. somebody just sent me an article yesterday yeah. that we were on a top 10 list of I, there were two shows that I am a part of that were on a top 10 best office comedies of all time. Sonny was one of them and Mythic Quest was one of them. This is said of all time. The Mythic Quest piece started like this. We're in like number five in the list. Mythic Quest isn't for everyone. Yeah, that nice. was the first thing Great start. it said. God damn it, man. Like, yeah, it's like, it's and so, I'm like, wait, wait a second. And this is a you positive just, review. Oh, it's a positive review. Yeah. But you're saying, it's almost like you're hedging. Yeah. Like the person that wrote it is saying, mm -hmm. I believe that this is a great show, but you might not. And I want to make sure that I have a healthy distance by saying, yeah. well, it's not for everybody. I warned you. I warned you. Now yeah, here's yeah, my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Fuck off. It's positive. like the comments yeah. and the reviews, if they hit something that you have a personal insecurity about, uh, then it stings, right? Like, I think for me, if it's like something about my voice or whatever, or like your looks or whatever, like that's that shit, you're like, ah, oh, fuck, ouch, why did I read that? You know, um, the other side of it is like, fuck you, is why I sound like and I'm aging. What do you want? You know, like, but it's, it's hard to like build that up when it's about the work. Yeah, that, I don't know. It all sucks. Fuck everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you, heard well, it, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> fuck everybody. We'd like you to know that today's episode is brought to you by Helix Sleep. Ah, Helix Sleep makes some of the absolute best, most comfortable mattresses out there, and they come to you right in a box. And I know what you're thinking, how good can a mattress out of a box be? Uh, pretty freaking good. Okay, well, listen, guys, sleep is very, very important to me personally, um, especially considering that uh, I actually struggle with sleep, so I'm very happy. Uh, to have a, a brand new Helix mattress to sleep on and that they gave it to me for free because that's cool. Yeah, but they won't give it to them for oh, free. Oh, sorry, so. that, they, that I paid for yeah. and sleep on. <laughs> <laughs> Helix has an online quiz that matches your body type and sleep style to the perfect mattress for you. Well, I know for me, I sleep, uh, I run hot. You run yeah, hot. I, I run a little hot and- Helix mattresses are very specifically designed to account for people like me. That's right, yeah. I've had my Helix mattress for about a week, and I gotta say, I love it. You know what else was awesome? The mm. unboxing of it. You Oh, you enjoyed you the enjoyed actual the process? Unboxing? Yes, that's an important criteria for me in any mattress. And you know, it's soft enough, but it's also firm enough. Helix yes. is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Sunny. That's right, guys. Go get yourselves the number one best overall mattress of 2021 from GQ. 
Oh, yeah. GQ said that, okay? And Wired Magazine and The Mattress, many leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine use as their go-to. We're talking about so, a, a super fantastic mattress no, situation. No, no, which, who's not going to want that? Yeah. To what degree can you say the wrong thing now? Like how to what degree? Yeah. I think it depends on probably who you are and what that thing mm. is. But, mm -hmm. uh, and, what and what you said and what your intention was. What your intention was. I think that does matter. It should, it do, it, 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 sometimes it doesn't matter in the immediate, in the immediacy reaction to something, but then Right, you can walk time. up and smack someone in the face and yell at them, but if you do it at the Oscars. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna, you're gonna have some blowback. If you do it at the after party, you're probably, probably gonna be fine. <laughs> he should have waited till the after party is what you're saying. Of course. I think the audience recognizes what we're doing, who we are and what we're doing Yeah. Uh, in terms of the television show. I don't think we've done or said anything here today. No, I think in this day and age more than ever, you know, you're, you're, you have a lot more coming at you and a lot more to sort of dance around and think about. But to some extent, you also have to just kind of press on. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I worry for our kids, like growing up in a social media world. Like I, like I, like yeah, you know, obviously our children aren't famous people, but you're famous within your school, right? You're famous within your mm -hmm. circle, like sure. your, you know, uh, Mikey of of the three mics <laughs> in mm -hmm. fourth grade or whatever. Like, yeah. and you know, the group of kids like tweeting or. Anything goes around. Mikey shit his pants, and it, and then mm -hmm. it gets like mm -hmm. posted, and it goes around like these. How do, how are people navigating it? Well, that's... well, in the same way, I mean, at least the way we're navigating it, is, it would be this, a, a, in a similar way, just on a larger scale. But it's the same thing, which is creating an armor essentially that that is impenetrable, but not not able to. Yeah, it, but I don't want to walk through my life with an impenetrable armor, okay. right? Like then that's okay, that's but, like some. Crazy shit. Well, that I don't mean it from like a like a sociopathic way, because um, you know, like sociopaths walk around and they have an impenetrable armor that you can't actually get to them because they don't feel anything. I mean more about your own value, meaning that you have mm -hmm. a sense of self and who you are and what your value is to yourself and how much you love yourself, and there's nothing that can penetrate that. Now that's active work. That's not something you just feel. It's yeah. something you're constantly reminding yourself of. And I think that's fair. And I think from there, you can allow people in, into your heart through that armor, if you so, if you so choose to. But if they try to come at you and you don't want them, that's what the armor's for. I think, I, yeah, I, look, I mean, I, I think it comes from your parents. But for the most part, it comes from, you know, having parental support. Mm, yeah. I, I really do believe, I mean, I, I know that's what it is for me, you know, anytime I've ever, you know, come up against um, uh, sort of like a, you're not good at this or you can't do this thing, you know, I, I personally believe that, you know, my parents' belief in me and their unconditional love mm -hmm. um, But ultimately, helped. don't you believe that what that created in you is not a need for parental love, because oftentimes that's what can happen, right. where it, you're still looking for external val validation, which we all are to a certain extent, sure. but but it will hit a wall where it, you can't, you can no longer look look to that. You have to look inside. That's right, right. And but but because you had that and you yeah. felt safe at an early age, yeah, you started to create that that s self worth yeah. that you take. Well, it's almost like you, you you ultimately you can go out into the world and be brave and make mistakes and screw up and not do things right much more easily if you know that there's a place where you can go back to if you had to, where you are loved and accept, accepted for who you are. Yes. Um, if you don't have that love and acceptance anywhere, um, I think it's extraordinarily difficult because it's hard to go out into the world and take risks without being- I feel that way about being, you guys. I feel that way about this show. So I feel so confident about going out and doing whatever it is that I do, Mr. Quest or a movie or another TV show or a, a business, whatever it might be. What movie? Because I know. <laughs> you doing a movie without us, man? It's a no, theoretical just, movie. When has he ever done a movie? I, I haven't, and I don't plan to in the future. But the point is that <laughs> if I were to, it's I frustrating to me. I wouldn't be afraid. I'm not, a I'm not as afraid to fail because I know I have a home that yeah. I can come back to yeah. and that, 
you guys love me unconditionally, but you put me in check, right? There's boundaries and there's discipline to our relationship. But at the end of the day, I know you love me. I know you value me. And because of that, I can go out and do other things. And if they fail, I go, fuck it. I got my guys. Yeah, no, you're right. I feel that way too. I absolutely feel there's that way. A, there's a great film called, um, oh shit. I think it's called The Great Beauty. It's an Italian movie. Uh, I think it won Best Foreign Film a few years ago. Um, oh, you told me about this movie. Yeah. Uh, I never saw it. Well, uh, a spoiler here. This is a spoiler. So plug your ears if you plan to watch Italian films, uh, which I think most of our fans aren't. <laughs> but there's this old like nun character and uh, she looks like 170. I mean, I don't know. It's probably makeup, but she looks very old. She's only got a couple teeth and she's always like eating roots. And uh, there's some, you know, some character says, oh, she always eats roots. And then at the end of the movie, the guy says to the nun, he's like, you know, he's like, sister, why are you always eating roots? And she turns and she looks at him and she goes, I don't speak Italian, but so they're like, para roots es importante, you know, because roots are important. Uh, and it's a really powerful moment in the film where you're like, oh yeah, fuck, if you're not rooted in something, then yeah, then the, all the comments and all the all the noise, all the fucking noise, the fucking mower outside, whatever it is, it all comes at you. Mm -hmm. You need to be grounded and rooted in something, which I also appreciate that I feel like I've gotten from you guys and this this show. You know where it doesn't come from? Where? Eating root vegetables. <laughs> Eating roots. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, nasty. That's a yeah. Um, uh, well, guys, I'm almost out of coffee, yeah, and uh, go I'm work. sure that everyone yeah. is out of patience. So, yeah, we, why don't we wrap this up? We talked heavy. 